You're right, you know, way back, and I think back to Kiva Club, a lot of the doings that we had here. The American Indian Movement uh, kind of had its humble beginnings here as well, here in the Southwest, and uh, I think some of you elders that recall that era, think of uh, the protest, the things that were happening back then. The spirit of exit, the spirit of Joe Mack and Mike, kind of left, emanated a certain spirit that we, I wouldn't say enjoyed, but had at that time. I myself uh, certainly enjoyed the music and the times that we got together. You know, after their little concerts and mentioned some of the places, you know, that the Triangle, I think, was perhaps the home base for them. And some of you recall that era. And Okies, you know, though many people will say, well, maybe not want to talk about it, but hey, that was an era, you know, that some people that put down alcohol, what have you, and certain places that we tell our children not to go to. And uh, I turn around and ask, where did you meet your wife? <laughs> Okies. <laughs> where did you meet your husband? Blue spruce. <laughs> we can all sit there and laugh and think about that, those times, you know. And again, thinking of Taos, you know, the, the culture, the tradition, the artists, as Tom was talking about, has a special place for many of us. You know, I think of many of my friends I went to school with at IIA back in the 1960s and uh, many of the teachers that I had, I, I, I had a uh, touch many of us because the spirit that many of these legends today still emanate through the artwork, through the music, through the form. Exit, you know, certainly had that sound. I'm personal friends with uh, Redbone and a lot of the big name entertainers <coughs> and uh, Neville Brothers, I think a lot of these guys at uh, Carlos Santana, I think a lot of these names were touched by <coughs> their music. Paul Ortega and I toured many times throughout the country and, and I think had an impact. I think each of these individuals, and I'm proud to say many of them, from New Mexico. I've emceed up at Taos for about eight or nine years and uh, certainly enjoyed the hospitality, a friendship. And I think Joe Mack and his music and Michael uh, certainly brought that spirit to many of us. It touched our heart. And again, I always think in a very respectful way of what they left. Oh, again, the music goes on as our drums and our songs and the people that you're gonna be hearing this evening. At this time, I have a gen special gentleman, uh, Mr. Kenny Frost, that I've known since back in the 1960s. He's a man of prayer as well. He's the spiritual advisor to the Albuquerque chapter office here, the American Indian Movement. And uh, he kind of come in a little bit of Indian time, I guess, coming from a youth country. He came all the way down from Four Corners to be here today. and. Uh, but I do again want to acknowledge Ron for doing an excellent job of providing us with our invocation and bringing that spirit here. Kenny, man of prayer, and uh, I've attended some of his ceremonies up in, up in uh, Four Corners area among the youth people. He hails to us from the youth nation. And uh, again, always has a lot of beautiful words. He's also a principal organizer of some of the various powwows. I think even all, all the way out to Hawaii, uh, he never invited me out there, but uh, <laughs> put a plug in for Sunka Skan. Or, uh, but anyway, uh, kind of ask him in a special way, also as a speaker and again a spiritual man to speak in behalf of the movement. Uh, I'd like to ask Ed to stand by. All right, Mr. Kenny Frost. White Bone means uh, hello in Ute, 
all means, relatives. It gives me a great pleasure to be able to see this building to the full since I've been coming down here, helping Bobby. For those of you who don't know Bobby, he took you and we had planned this memorial last month and bad weather got in its way so we postponed it to this month. And it just so happens that this month's gonna fall within two days of the 73 wounded knee get together in South Dakota. We have been instrumental, many of us, from the very beginning with the American Indian Movement, when the movement of the American Indians was starting in the 70s. Exit was one of the first bands, native bands, to start the movement. And if you listen to Silent Warrior, you can hear it in their lyrics. For those of us who are now blossomed into uh, later years, I didn't say old, <laughs> but I said blossom. <laughs> we remember those times, those turbulent times. You know, we um, traveled to Alcatraz. We traveled to Shiprock. Third uh, plant. We traveled to uh, uh, where the Braves play, Washington, changing the mascot name. We been to Wounded Knee. When Wounded Knee happened in '73, there was a group of youths that, and we were just not even teenagers yet. We went to support the Lakota people. Dennis, Russell, all those <laughs> leaders of AIM at the time, many of them have crossed over now. And one of the interesting things was that as we traveled to all these gatherings, defending the rights of our native people and brothers and sisters all over Turtle Island, we stood together as one. We didn't falter, we didn't bend, we didn't you go around dividing one another, but we stood strong as an organization. And like many organizations, sometimes people do crazy things and there's always infighting and families and stuff, and that's the way things go sometimes. But then at the end, there's always that mutual understanding of coming together, being together as one and never forgetting who we are as people of this land. I've known Tom, Tom Teagarden, we used to sing over in Rapid City, Rosebud, and um, it's always been fun. We've been singing since the early 70s, and singing the Lakota songs, and Tawa songs, and Sundance songs, and whatever song that's out there, we probably sang a little bit of it, along with Boy, who's uh, traveled the Indian country too as well, with Redbone, you know, the, a lot of the people, Carlos Santana, the Indigo Girls, who, all these big name bands who support Native rights. We work with them, help them, they helped us, and. We supported our people regardless of who they are. Sat, got arrested, standing up for fishing rights, hunting rights, the water, everything that's out there. But yet, we're still struggling to fight for our rights as human beings of people of this land. So it's good to see everybody here. One of the things that and one of the reasons I came down to help Bobby was to help rebuild the Albuquerque AIM once again. And also the spiritual leader for Colorado AIM, as well as one of the spiritual leaders for um, 
aim out of uh, Minneapolis and also uh, in Canada. So I've been uh, involved in AIM for a long time, but have taken on the roles and duties as a spiritual advisor to AIM. The last time was at Wounded Knee was uh, for the 40th anniversary of Wounded Knee. And there we saw the Clyde Belcourt and all the other guys who had passed on that weren't there. So in a couple of days, well actually tomorrow, I'll be traveling, if I wake up early enough, hit the road to South Dakota and, and uh, take part at the gathering at Wounded Knee, bringing in one of my Eagle staffs and uh, doing some blessings and doing some uh, doctoring up there. So there's a big list of events that's happening in Wounded Knee starting tonight with the power in Rapid City. So if you get fly a plane, you can jump in the plane and go there. <laughs> but um, from what I understand, people are caravanning to Wounded Knee tomorrow to get there for the march on Monday in honor of the warriors who uh, have uh, crossed over. Lenny Foster, who is, um, lives in Gallup, I believe, is one of the people who's being honored. He has helped with, uh, with Leonard. He was released from prison. So we've been working on that too as well. But it's important for us to all come together. And as I was mentioning, Bobby, Earlier, we have t-shirts for sale and um, Dave Mason and his uh, cohort brought the t-shirts over so we've got t-shirts for sale. But most importantly, we're also doing a, uh, a uh, membership drive to build our membership here for New Mexico AIM or Albuquerque AIM so that we can get the, the working relationship built back up. Now, one of the things that we've done is with Chaco Canyon, about four years ago, I came down and Chaco Canyon was getting ready to be uh, disturbed. And so uh, we had a meeting with the um, sweat ceremony. And I told Bobby, I said, uh, you know, what we need to do is uh, we need to work on Chaco Canyon, but from the perspective of AIM and preserve and protect those sites because no one's really protecting those sites, speaking for the ancestors. So because I deal and I work in the protection of sacred religious sites, that uh, we drafted up a letter and it just so happens that we had three lawyers there at the meeting. So I wrote up the uh, gist of the letter, they tweaked it into a legal format. And so AIM at that time took the road because no Indian tribes were taking that road to protect those sites at Chaco, which is the oldest, one of the oldest sites in North America. So that's one of the things that I've been telling Bobby is that we as an organization can do so much, but we have to all work together. You have organizations here. Boy, you mentioned the Kiva Club is one. Then you also have other justice organizations here in Albuquerque who have done things, but not really come together. We need to come together and work together for our people on behalf of our people, but most importantly on behalf of our ancestors. So this is what we're looking at to bring AIM to the forefront to be the spear point tip to bringing all these organizations together to help preserve and protect our ancestral sites or the rights of our native people. We're looking at 
the possibility also to take over the uh, Indian Center because the Indian Center has uh, gone downhill. And it started out with a great idea and it's still there. But those are some of the things we want to do. Also working with the MMIW. Uh, when I was going to Hawaii, it helped establish the MMIW here on the islands of Hawaii. Bird Missing Island Women. Because sex trafficking is doing the same thing there as they're doing here. We tracked it from um, the big island of Hawaii. And uh, the women are being transported to uh, the Portland area. So sex trafficking is a big thing in the islands, but not only for the Hawaiian people, but for the Polynesian and Pacific Islanders, regardless of who they are. So as you can see, we, this is what we're all doing and stuff like that. So if you have any questions, come up and talk to us. Or Boyd's here and Dave's over there with the t-shirts. And uh, this, this is where I told you about the history of uh, it was just kind of the, t the iceberg. But I welcome each and every one of you and thank you for coming uh, because you know, even though our relatives no longer here with us, you played a big part in the American Native Movement and was a big supporter. So thank you. Well,